Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I booked 46 discovery calls for my agency in just 30 days and how you can take a lot of the principles that I applied to do so in your agency to get very similar results. The way I'm gonna be structuring this video is first of all, I'm gonna be showing you proof of me actually having booked those meetings. We're gonna be jumping on a queue rescheduling. I'm gonna be showing you the amount of meetings that I booked for the month of February, not just February, I'm gonna be showing you January, December, November, et cetera, et cetera, just to show you that it's not just one single month, right? It's not just one single day that I booked all these meetings. It's a predictable stream of meetings on a monthly basis. I'm pretty much on autopilot. The second thing is I'm gonna be exposing my whole process to land all these meetings pretty much on autopilot, pretty much hands off at this point. The last thing I'm gonna be talking about is the importance of having discovery calls on a predictable basis to grow your agency. Because if you're not talking to clients on a daily basis, your agency is not gonna grow. It sounds very simple, but a lot of people uh, neglect the just importance of landing these meetings. Really excited for this video. It's gonna be incredibly valuable. So let's hop on my computer and let me show you the scheduler. So here we are inside my computer and I'm gonna be walking you through uh, my previous months uh, in terms of discovery calls, just so that you guys get an idea of how many discovery calls I'm getting per day and on a monthly basis. And so first things first, on February, I got a total of 46 discovery calls in 30 days, technically in 29 days. Uh, obviously I've blurred out this part uh, just for confidentiality reasons, uh, but I've got one meeting, two meetings, three meetings, uh, three, four, I've got a bunch of days where I had four meetings, uh, so quite packed, but you guys can clearly see that I'm averaging around over just over uh, one meeting a day. And so that is February, just to give you a bit of an idea. On Saturdays, I, uh, I block it out. Uh, so I never take calls on Saturdays, although I did have one here, simply because on the 5th of February, uh, it was actually my birthday, and so I blocked it out as well, um, as I had a, a few plans uh, for that day. Um, and so what I did, uh, just to make up for that, is I made my Saturday available, and I had one meeting then. Uh, but basically, that was my February. Now, what I wanna do is not only show you guys one month, because again, that could literally be an anomaly, right? That could literally be like a crazy month for me, uh, and you know, February was actually the biggest month for my agency, but I actually wanna show you guys that this has been something that's, that's been going on for uh, around four months now. And so if we take a look at January, uh, it was definitely slower, but January I was also averaging around one appointment a day. And so here we can see one, one, three, 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 bunch of threes, a bunch of twos, um, but yeah, you know, roughly uh, one, uh, one call a day, one discovery call a day, uh, and then if we take a look at December, obviously December, uh, you know, I took all these days off. Uh, it's not that I didn't work at all my agency, it's more that I didn't take calls over that period. Also, uh, you know, over this period of, of time, uh, business owners just don't really take calls either, right? I, people are just enjoying their time. Um, but I still had a, a few calls, but November, if we take a look at that, uh, I was also averaging around one appointment a day. Hope you guys can see that this is not a just an anomaly and that I didn't have a crazy month. February was definitely a good month. But that is that for the, the discovery calls. Now, what I would say for December is that I did have a mix of discovery calls and mentorship calls. A lot of you don't know this because I keep it very low key. Uh, but I actually do offer mentorship and I do have one-on-one -on -one mentorship uh, with students. And so I do have a bunch of uh, mentorship uh, applications that come through completely inbound. I don't do any any advertising. I don't really mention it anywhere. Uh, it's, it's mostly just people are reaching out to me and that is completely inbound. Those calls are basically people wanted to uh, jump on my mentorship, but before they do, I wanna make sure that they're just a perfect fit. As mentorship for me is really just more of a passion project. It's not something that I do to pay the bills. Uh, and I wanna make sure that I'm working with hungry, ambitious people who are ready to discover their agency and really change their life. So I wanna make sure that they're a perfect fit. And so before uh, we jump on, we have the, the, the application call. The split that I had uh, this month was roughly 15 to 20% private mentorship application calls and 80%, 85% uh, discovery calls for my agency. And so that is really the split for February. But what I will say as well is that on January, on, uh, on November, I wasn't offering any mentorship. It's really only since uh, I started you know, doubling down on my personal brand uh, and uh, I'm, I'm putting out these videos on YouTube and, and TikTok that, uh, that I opened up the, the mentorship applications. And so that is that for acuity scheduling. Uh, it's honestly an amazing software um, and I could not recommend it enough. The final thing that I would say is a bunch of meetings, I think around one or two this month, uh, were actually hosted on WhatsApp. Uh, and so that is literally the, the last resort that I will take. But uh, if a client really doesn't want to do Zoom or if they're just really not used to the software, um, I will just reduce all friction and we'll have the, the, the meeting either on, on FaceTime or WhatsApp. And it's happened uh, twice this month, I think. Uh, and so that is that for, uh, 
for uh, the meetings, but mainly all of them are booked through Acuity and that is what I showed you guys. So that is that for Acuity and on the screen, I'm gonna leave a screenshot of an email that I got from Acuity uh, for the calls that I booked for this week. And so as you guys probably know, the software that I use to book in all my calls is called Acuity Scheduling. You guys have a link in the bio if you wanna sign up for it. Uh, but basically Acuity, what, what it does is on Monday, Acuity will send you an email with all the meetings that you have booked for that week. And so this week, for example, I had uh, nine meetings booked even before the week started. That really gives you just a lot of oxygen. It, it really just gives you that peace of mind because you know that you're gonna be speaking to prospects the whole week and also that a percentage of those prospects that you speak to are actually gonna be converting into clients. And so it gives you a, a ton of you know clarity, a, a ton of uh, peace of mind because those are high impact, high income uh, activities. That is a snapshot of my previous months uh, and also even this month, how I'm booking discovery calls predictably on a monthly basis. Now what I wanna talk about is the process that I follow to land all these meetings on a predictable monthly basis, pretty much on autopilot. I've spoken about this very briefly on some of my previous videos. Basically the main two platforms that I contact prospects on is first of all, LinkedIn, and secondly, email. On those two platforms, I have what I call personalized automation. That means that I'm reaching a, a large pool of qualified prospects with commonalities so that I can actually personalize my outreach, but I'm, I'm reaching a, a ton of different prospects on a daily basis uh, and I'm driving all that traffic to a booking page. And what that allows me to do is waking up to new meetings having been booked without much input from my side because I'm driving all this traffic to a landing page and a lot of that traffic will convert straight away without asking any questions or without uh, getting back to me. Uh, and so I will wake up to new meetings having been booked pretty much on autopilot. A lot of those uh, leads will actually reach back to me and then I'll start a conversation and drive them to uh, booking a call. If you guys are really new to the SMA space, never wanna pitch our clients or service without having booked in a call with them, right? Just to put it into perspective and just to make it very clear for, for a lot of you who are beginners, sales call is what I call a high income scenario. It's a place where you can actually close a client to a you know, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 6,000 month retainer, right? You can't do that over email, especially because the client needs to know how you hold yourself, uh, the client needs to know how you speak, the client needs to know how confident you are in your service, the client needs to get a lot of in uh, intel input from you, and you also need to see if that client would be a good fit for your services and really diagnose where, where they're currently at to then pinpoint your charge, to then pinpoint your, your fee for the services. And so that's just a little side tangent, but that is the, the process that I follow. Uh, using LinkedIn and email to drive a ton of leads to the booking page mostly. Also starting uh, conversations uh, on those um, on those platforms. Second process that I follow is the cold video audit. I put out this video previously on my channel going over that process and how you may go about it and really the best practices and, and what I've learned from sending over 300 video audits at this point. You guys can check that out after this video. Basically that method, I only use it for those prospects that, I, that I'm really, really passionate about, that I truly, truly believe in. In many cases, brands and companies that I use on a daily basis. Now, that does not mean that the prospects that I'm reaching out to on LinkedIn and, and email are very qualified brands and very qualified prospects that I would be delighted and I would be very passionate to work with because quite frankly, they are, right? One of my team members does quite a bit of vetting uh, before reaching out to these prospects. But the, the prospects that I pick for a video audit, I need to make sure that those prospects are incredibly qualified and that I'm completely fine if those prospects don't answer the video audit. Even though I've put, you know, 20 minutes, 50 minutes into a video audit that they may never watch because if I send out seven to 10 video audits, which is really the number that I go for on a weekly basis, I used to do a ton more, but bear in mind, I've got quite a lot of my plate right now with my agency, with my current client and a bunch of other stuff. I send out seven to 10 video audits on a weekly basis to prospects that have never asked for a video audit and that have never inquired for this type of service. I'm very happy if one or two of those prospects actually lead to a meeting simply because those prospects are big companies or prospects that I'm very passionate about and also prospects that I know will give me a ton of social proof, referrals and authority in my single niche. Now, if you guys are just starting out, I'm not saying you should uh, shoot seven to 10 video audits to uh, very qualified and, and just big companies a week. What I would personally do and what I did in the beginning had a mix of medium sized to big sized businesses and uh, I would actually send out a lot more than seven to 10 video audits a week. Simply because when you don't have clients, the only thing you're left to do is outreach and sales. It's really the main priority at that point. And so that is the process that I follow. If you guys are in my free Facebook group community, the client closers, you will have seen an example and a template of a video audit that I would send over to a client. Uh, and so you can check that out uh, if you guys haven't done so already on my free Facebook group community uh, for those of you who are in there. The final thing that I wanna talk about is the importance of landing meetings on a predictable basis. And so it seems very evident and, and very obvious, but if you're not landing meetings on a consistent basis, it's gonna be very hard for you to grow your agency. Because simply when you're starting out, you have to realize that if you don't have any prior experience in, in sales, um, and, and even if you do, when you're starting out, you, you will need 10 to 12 uh, meetings to just warm up. 
and, and to really find your footing, right? I'm not saying you can't land your first client in, in that first meeting. Um, you know, for me, I think it took around six to seven meetings uh, to land that, that first client. You know, for you, it could be, you know, first three meetings, you signed three clients, right? Uh, everyone is different, but I truly believe that you need to give yourself that, that, uh, that room uh, to just improve and really don't beat yourself up for the performance in those first calls uh, simply because you're warming up. You're actually learning a ton about yourself, your personality, the way you handle sales. You're only going to be improving from then on. But what I can tell you is obviously the conversion rate on those first meetings is going to be completely different to uh, the conversion rate that you're going to have when you've done 40, 50, 60 meetings, right? The conversion rate that I have currently now is much, much higher than the conversion rate I used to have in my first 20 calls. Right now, I'm averaging a, a conversion rate of 40%, uh, which is pretty good. Keep in mind that there's a certain percentage of, uh, of discovery calls that I land that I just find out on the call that we're not gonna be a good fit, and uh, it just, it, it wouldn't be a, a perfect fit, and uh, they're not qualified. And so that does happen, and that is why uh, it's 40%, but when I started out, it's probably at that 20 to 30% conversion rate. It definitely does increase because you get a lot more confident, not only on yourself, but also on, on the service that you can provide and the value that you can provide for businesses. But it's just so, so important to get a lot of meetings at the start and, and really uh, doing your whole uh, agency journey. My piece of advice uh, to you guys, if you're starting out your agency and you don't have the number of clients that you would like to have, you're not at the monthly revenue that you want to be, it's honestly to jump on as many meetings as you possibly can. Don't be too picky on, on, on whether they're you know extremely qualified or just not qualified at all, uh, whether they're making you know bank or they're just completely broke, just jump on as many meetings as you possibly can because that's gonna teach you a lot about your style. It's gonna teach you a lot about sales. You're only gonna get better from, from then on so that when you land those meetings who are much more qualified, who are much bigger clients, uh, then you can have that confidence, that momentum that's gonna allow you to close that meeting much easier. And so that is my final tip uh, for you guys. It's incredibly important that you have that sales process that predictably churns out uh, discovery calls. You can only do so by testing a lot of outreach methods. The final, final thing that I will say is just test as many outreach methods as you possibly can when you're first starting out. If you're doing local business, try cold call and try walking. Uh, don't just completely disregard an outreach method when you haven't tried it, right? Because there's different personalities and different personalities are suited for different outreach methods. Uh, the same way that if you're doing e-commerce, don't completely disregard Facebook or, or Instagram or social media as an outreach method because that could work amazingly well for you, whereas for me, it might not be a, as good, right? And so, at this point, I've tried pretty much every single outreach method out there. And the reason why I'm doing LinkedIn and email now is because I've been very methodical and very scientific about the results that I've gotten for each outreach method. And I've been able to diagnose and really pinpoint the ones that are generating the, the, the highest yield and the greatest returns and, and the greatest results for me. And, and so I've really honed in on those and put all my attention and energy on those. But it's really important that at first, you're just testing as many outreach methods as you possibly can, because that's gonna give you a ton of feedback. You're essentially gonna learn what outreach methods are best suited for you. So that is that for the importance of landing meetings on a predictable basis. Number one, make sure that you're jumping on as many meetings as you possibly can to gain that confidence, to gain that momentum that's gonna allow you to close those bigger clients those more qualified clients when the time comes. And secondly, try as many outreach methods as you possibly can, because after you've tested a bunch of those, then you can actually pinpoint the ones that are best suited for you, that you're getting the best results with, and then hone in and double down on those. That is that for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like. It really helps out a ton with the algorithm, and it will really mean the world. Uh, also, leave down below any questions, any comments you may have on this video. If you guys haven't already, check out the link in bio. That is a link to my free Facebook group community, The Client Closers. And lastly, guys, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's so much content coming out on entrepreneurship and a 360 approach to SMA with a specific focus on sales and outreach. You're not going to want to miss it. So hope everything is going well in your agency journey and I'll speak to you in the next one. Peace.